All right, time for a new video. First up, you'll notice that the main screen, the main menu has changed. I've uh, collapsed a number of things, consolidated um, uh, entry points uh, onto this main menu, but I'll cover all that in a later video. Today, I would like to talk about the dial map device. It's uh, a way that um, any player uh, with no map creation skills whatsoever can dial up a map that meets criteria that uh, they might like to play. So let's just jump right into it. Uh, there's a large range of options available. Um, it, the, the game will come with a certain number of presets already loaded up uh, for you and then you can just bounce through random values and, and, and get different maps. But uh, for the purposes of this video I'd like to go through some of these options to show you some of the cool maps uh, that uh, the, the generator can create. So uh, first up, um, let's uh, let's zoom in on the uh, the map preview here, uh, so we can get a, get a better look in this small window that I'm making the video in. Uh, we have a number of options spread across terrain, resources, uh, enemies, and such. And uh, let's just let's just play with the terrain here for a moment. Um, <coughs> on on each uh, of these screens, there is a, a random seed. That's the seed to the pseudo-random number generator. The same seed will produce the same sequence of random numbers, uh, and different seeds produce, of course, different sequences of numbers. So as I, as I change the seed, all the other settings that control the map generation stay the same, but I, I get a different map as I go through each number. But as I revisit the previous numbers that I've been through, I get the same map. So seed one will, with this set of settings, will always produce the exact same map. Of course, there are many possible seeds. There's max int number of seeds, so you can you can really really bounce through uh, a large number of combinations, millions or, or billions of combinations for any given uh, collection of settings. Uh, <coughs> moving on here. Um, you can you can of course dial up um, what size map you'd like and what aspect ratio. There's kind of wide and, and short 16 by 9 aspect or, or a classic 4 by 3 or, or square. Let's just stay in the middle right now and of course there are map sizes. You can go, go kind of small and compact. Um, still larger than a Creeple World 1 map but but small. All the way up to really really large maps um, there on uh, there on max it's actually stretching things okay let me bounce back down to 1x there this the window I'm, I'm doing this in for the video is small uh, there you can see a very large map uh, in fact we could go square that's 256 by 256 that's that's very large um, that's that there could be a lot of action on a map like that um, but let's just uh, let's just go back to uh, to medium four by three. Um, I only have two themes in the game right now. The themes are just collections of textures. They don't they don't change the map terrain and and, and play, but they do change how it looks. Uh, of course, be many more when the game ships. But right now, I've just got two, so you can see the same map, but it looks different. Let's let's zoom back in. It looks different as I change the textures. Notice that's kind of a this area in the middle of the map is looks like a desert in that theme, and here it's green. Okay, now before before I explore some of these other options, let's let's hop over to enemies and and turn off some stuff so that uh, it doesn't uh, it doesn't get in our way. Let's uh, let's uh, turn off the digitalis, and um, and that's fine. Let's just just I just want to get rid of that blue so we can focus on the uh, on the terrain, and let's turn down the number of horizontal ridges and the number of vertical ridges. So I just want you to see the terrain uh, as I tweak some of these uh, fractal parameters. And we don't need any, any void, so let's just get rid of that. So uh, now we just have a nice, nice clean fractal texture or, or terrain that, that's being generated by the uh, controls that are available under under fractal control. There are, there are two different algorithms that are available to you, and you can toggle that algorithm here, 
and these settings apply, each of these settings applies to each algorithm, but they affect them in different ways. So you just have to kind of play with these to, to get a feel for, for how they operate. Um, for the alternate noise algorithm, there is a seamless option. Seamless means to make the right, left, top, and bottom edges of the map match. So you can see the right edge of this map, right edge of this map looks like it was the left edge rolled around. So it, it creates a map that can, that can roll around. Um, Okay, so uh, let's just take a look at uh, the stretch. Um, that, that, that controls the stretch or the zoom in, in both the X and, and Y dimensions. So as we, as we zoom in on the X axis, it stretches it out, or we can zoom way out. Uh, same for the Y. So if you, if you zoom way out, then you get a very noisy map because it's it's got a lot more information packed into it. It's almost as if you you zoomed way out, uh, went out into orbit, and looked looked at a wider area of terrain. Um, lots of action on a map like this, and probably lots of terraforming going to be required. If we zoom all the way in on both, then you end up with with a more tactical map. So, but j just by playing with the stretch. I can generate very different maps uh, just by zooming. Okay, let's uh, let's go back and restore some of those uh, settings now. Um, the let's, let's get rid of our ridges again, and let's uh, get rid of our our void. So um, the amplitude controls how high the terrain grows. You can see these the mountains are getting higher as, as I increase the amplitude and if I drop it all the way to zero they, they, they go low again. So that that controls kind of how high the peaks in your terrain uh, can get. Um, persistence and uh, and lack of narity, um, you can think of you can think of them as controlling the, the how grainy or how f how fractured the, the, the terrain is. Um, so as I increase the, the persistence here, you can see the, the noise goes up. And this guy here kind of breaks up, adds gaps, and pixelates the, the terrain more. These two are related to each other. So if you turn one all the way down, the other doesn't have an effect. Um, so you've got to have a little persistence uh, before this one can operate. And uh, notice that's the same as, uh, as that. So they, they need to, they need non-zero values to, to operate together. And you can get some interesting combinations in here. And re remember, um, remember you can you can pair this by zooming in and and getting different different configurations of terrain. So let's just uh, let's just get back close to where we were. Uh, there is a smoothing algorithm. This is my own smoothing function that I added that uh, takes out a lot of the pixel noise that can that can fly out of uh, of some algorithms. So uh, I, I default that to own because um, uh, it makes the maps generally more playable. But depending on uh, on the values you have in place, it may or may not make much difference. But it's there to tweak and play with. Anyway, quickly moving on, there are there are ridges. You can add horizontal ridges and vertical ridges. Add tons if you really like and just make a giant mess of a map. Um, you can let's uh, let's just pick uh, let's just pick one. You can control the starting height. That's the lowest level of the ridge, how high the terrain is. So you can make bare impressions in the terrain or, or, or raise them up and, and make, make taller terrains. You can, of course, modify the width, make big, big stretches, mountain ranges across your terrain. You can modify the slope. That, that controls how quickly um, it will, uh, the, the ridge will rise. So if you start with a real wide, width. Um, you can turn, uh, tweak the slope so that it grows more slowly. So we, it's almost as if we zoomed in on, uh, on that ridge. 
Um, okay. And of course, same goes for um, uh, same for the vertical ridges. They operate the same way. Void uh, can be entertaining to add to maps. Um, you can add void ridges, which is to say, let's get rid of the, get rid of the, uh, the train ridges here for a second. The void ridges make a ridge, uh, but it removes terrain. So it's not raising terrain, it's creating void. So if you want to divide a map or create an island on a map, uh, uh, you, can, uh, you can do that. So here's uh, uh, three sections on a map. And let's uh, increase the width, make them further apart. So that's pretty cool, pretty pretty quick way to do that. Um, if we if we want to add a, a vertical ridge, we can do that as well. You can start to chop a map up to many little pieces. And remember, all these are controlled by the seeds. So as I bounce through different seeds, I get different configurations. Um, Let's get rid of the void ridges there so you can see what lowest is void means. Lowest is void means to start and make the lowest terrain levels, this many of them, void. So zero means don't do anything. Of course, one means take the lowest terrain level and make it void. So down here in the lower right hand corner was the lowest terrain on the map. We make it void. Now let's make next t the bottom two levels void, or the bottom three, or four, or five. So you can make space island maps uh, really, really quickly here. Um, if we want uh, want more islands, we can just uh, tweak our zoom. All right. Well, you notice that circle state in the middle. That's the landing pad. We you can make it or not. That's uh, a guaranteed place for you to land a ship, or for the player to land a ship, so uh, you can turn that on and off. If it's on, you can change its size. Make great big areas or, or, or small areas. Um, you can change its height, make it higher or low, or sink it into the terrain, and of course you can move it. So in fact, if, uh, if we moved it all the way to the lower right hand corner and we made it really tall, and you make it uh, make it big, then you can create a starting area on a corner of the map, or a huge portion of the map if you if you really want to make it easy on the player. Um, just a quick way to make a guaranteed place uh, that a player can start. So those are your train options. Um, you can make millions of different kinds of maps, and when you find something that you like, this this code here embodies all of the options across all these tabs. You can copy that to the clipboard, then go send it to somebody else, uh, share it, put it on the forum, whatever, and then somebody can take that and paste it, and it'll load up the exact same map uh, that, that you've configured. Um, so resources, of course, you've seen these, been staring at these letters the whole time. There's ore deposits and totems stuck on here. So uh, if you don't want totems, get rid of them. If you don't want uh, ore deposits, get rid of them. If you want a whole slew, then knock yourself out. You can change the placement. Let's add some. Let's add a bunch yet, so you can see how this works. Uh, all over the map means randomly place them on the map, or only on the right half, or the top half, or the left half, or the bottom half. That's good if you make enemies on one side of the map. You can put resources on the other, for instance. Uh, same for totems, and of course controlled by their own seed. Now notice as I change this seed value it changes the configuration of the totems and the ore but it leaves the terrain alone. So you can get the terrain that you like, the map you like, and then come around and, and fiddle with the uh, resources until, uh, until they land in interesting locations. Similarly for enemies, enemies have uh, their own seed value and their own placement. So you can bounce them around. Actually, let's go back here and turn off our resources so we can look at just uh, just enemies here. Let's uh, place them all. There's emitters and digitalis and runner nest and spore towers and anti-air towers. It's all here. I won't go through every detail and every option here. You can even add an inhibitor if you'd like. Notice it created a pad for it. We can manually move that inhibitor around. <coughs> inhibitors of course are superstructures 
Um, you can control how often they emit, what strength they emit with, and they're, they're often the target on a map. So if you take out an emitter, you win the map. So you have to think about whether you want to include that and where. Um, Similarly, for the other towers, you can control what kind of spores, their intervals, their payloads, uh, runner nests, make super fast tiny runners or make giant colossal behemoths that, that take 10 shots each to destroy. Digitalis, let's turn that back on. Uh, you can see it's automatically added some here. They, the blooms are the circles that appear uh, around emitters. You can change the frequency, which is how likely an emitter is to have a bloom. So let's just turn that up to 100%. That means every emitter will have a bloom. The min and max bloom size basically say how small could it be or how big could it be? What, what range? Um, so you can, you, can, you can make impossible maps or horrible maps, of course. Um, or you can pick, pick values here that might make, uh, might make fun sense for fun. Uh, tendrils are the lines that come out. So I can um, turn those up, make different tendrils. I can uh, increase the maximum distance. So you can see those spikes, those tendrils come out further. Or I can dial them back in. If I don't really like them at all, I can just turn them down. So you've got a number of options here for, uh, for Digitalis. Um, and, of course, as you play maps, uh, as you find a map, all you do is click Launch Mission. It la launches it up, loads it up, and it automatically adds it to a list. So you have a scrolling list. So you can see previous maps that have been played. Uh, you can see some maps that I looked at here is the one I, was, uh, I started with. Um, here's a big giant map, kind of a weird space island connected by ridges and some, and some uh, digitalis that crosses void. Here's a, here's a pretty cool one. Um, it was small and it's, it's zoomed in. If we go back and look at the terrain, you can see that we uh, uh, were zoomed way in and we used the, the non-alternate noise algorithm. Uh, this was an interesting map. I played this one uh, a couple hours ago. Uh, it, was, uh, it was interesting. I thought I'd have to do a lot of terraforming, but it turns out there's a way to snake through all this, uh, all this terrain here. Um, but you can make uh, can make lots of uh, lots of interesting maps. I'll, I'll just go ahead and launch this one before I finish the video out here. And you can see it looks like a horrible mess to start with, but there's a nice place to start. Um, it's not as bad as it looks. See, as you can see, there's places you can park units. Uh, there's lots of resources here for you to start with. This uh, spore tower is going to blossom. It scared me to death when I played it, but um, I actually had it set so that it emitted anti-emitter or anti-creeper spores. So it launched a huge uh, wave, like 15 all at once. And I thought I was doomed, but when they hit, they deposited large amounts of anti-creeper. And it turns out that a key to playing this map was utilizing that anti-creeper uh, um, sucking it up with the sprayers and then using it uh, to bomb and use and and as with frontline sp sprayers to deposit to take out these very strong emitters uh, that are here and um, I also had the runners turned up these are very healthy hard to destroy fast moving runners and as time progresses uh, a large population of them gets built up uh, and I, I had to use a lot of snipers to, to take them out Anyway, that's uh, the preview for this week, and thanks for watching.